Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to be discussing a very important topic and that is post-concussion syndrome. I already did a video on concussions, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about post-concussion syndrome. I'm going to talk about how the cervical spine is involved. I'm going to speak about chiropractic care for treatment, about nutrition for treatment, and exercise for treatment of a post-concussion syndrome. Post-concussion syndrome is defined as symptoms persisting for a few weeks to more than six months after a concussion has occurred. Now, the mechanism of injury of a concussion is either a direct blow to the head or a direct blow to the body, which causes uncontrolled neck motion. The brain usually contacts the inside of the skull, which is very hard. This is usually accompanied by a cervical spine trauma or injury. Cervical spine is the medical name for the neck. You're going to hear me use that term a lot today. So remember, the cervical spine is the medical name for the neck. Cervical spine injuries and concussion share similar mechanisms of injury and nearly identical symptoms or causes. One of the most common symptoms of a concussion is post-traumatic headache. Post-traumatic headache is often abbreviated to PTH. The incidence of post-traumatic headache varies between 5 and 90% of concussion sufferers. Post-traumatic headache is defined as a headache that occurs within one week following the trauma that caused the concussion. Majority of post-traumatic headaches resolve within 6 to 12 months. They are caused by cervical muscle tension and cervical postural impairment. Cervical spine involvement in post-concussion syndrome is supported by increasing evidence and is widely accepted clinically. Cervical spine injuries and concussion share similar mechanisms of injury and nearly identical symptoms or causes. I know I said that before, but it's so important to realize that. So I'm going to say it again. Cervical spine injuries and concussion share similar mechanisms of injury and nearly identical symptoms. In most cases, the headaches that persist and are diagnosed as post-concussion syndrome are related to cervical musculoskeletal pathology. The transmission of forces to the head during a concussion may result in trauma to the cervical spine. Axial loading, hyperflexion, and hyperextension of the cervical spine are the most frequently reported mechanisms of injury to the cervical spine associated in sports such as football, hockey, and wrestling. A large percentage of concussion sufferers continue to demonstrate symptoms after the expected recovery time frame. The most common symptoms of post-concussion syndrome include headaches at 92.2%, neck pain 90%, and dizziness at 68.9%. So headaches, neck pain, and dizziness are by far the most common symptoms of post-concussion syndrome. The mechanism of an acceleration-deceleration transfer to the cervical spine is nicknamed whiplash. During whiplash, cervical structures are stressed at the end ranges of their motion and can lead to neck injuries. Stresses may lead to injuries to cervical vertebrae and to the soft tissue, including the muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Whiplash symptoms include neck pain, cervicogenic headache. A cervicogenic headache is a headache where the source is coming from the cervical spine, which again is the medical terminology for the neck. But again, the whiplash symptoms include neck pain, cervicogenic headache, memory issues and concentration disturbances, muscle tension, sleep disturbances, dizziness, fatigue, cervical spine range of motion restrictions, irritability, tinnitus, and visual disturbances. These symptoms are similar to the symptoms of a concussion. Following whiplash, the cervical spine is often the source of symptoms. The neck received the transmitted forces of the impact 
and the same acceleration deceleration mechanism that produces a concussion. During the whiplash, the cause of cervicogenic and brain-induced symptoms may be caused by either the concussion or the cervical spine involvement or both. Upper cervical spine impairments, if not treated, can lead to chronic post-concussion symptoms. Signs and symptoms such as decreased cervical spine pain-free range of motion, muscle tenderness, headaches, stiffness, and ridiculous symptoms have been reported to occur post-concussion. Most cervicogenic symptoms have been attributed to injury or impairment of the upper cervical spine, meaning between cervical vertebrae C1 and C3. Researchers have suggested that abnormal somatosensory afferents arising from muscle spindles, joints, and pain receptors or nerve roots of the upper cervical spine contribute to cervicogenic headaches and cervicogenic dizziness. Current concussion management has evolved from a rest is best approach to an integrated targeted approach. Complete symptom resolution may not be required before treatment begins and symptom provocation should be the determining factor in progressing treatment. Initial rest is important for the return of cognitive function and symptom resolution. Then an integrated approach may accelerate symptom resolution and return to activity. In patients with cervical spine conditions and post-traumatic headaches, the most effective treatment strategies are avoiding immobilization, resuming work, and undergoing comprehensive treatments. Cervical manipulation, cryotherapy, thermal therapy, soft tissue massage, acupuncture, passive stretching, and exercise are effective treatments for patients with a cervical injury. Chiropractic care to the cervical spine, specifically the upper cervical spine, can help to restore proper physiology. The chiropractic adjustment helps to reestablish proper skeletal motion and remove impingement on any nerves. The chiropractic adjustment can be performed in many different ways. There are numerous techniques in chiropractic. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated many patients who have suffered concussions and even more patients who have suffered from cervical spine impairment and also from post-concussion syndrome. If someone comes in and I thought they had post-concussion syndrome, the first thing I would do is a detailed consultation and a detailed examination. Those two things are going to help me to determine what is the source of their symptoms. After that, I would do a report of findings where I explain in detail to them what are the sources of their symptoms and what I could do to help them to remove the sources of those symptoms. Chiropractic care is going to help to restore proper physiology. With the chiropractic adjustment, this helps to reestablish proper skeletal motion and helps to remove any irritation on the nerves. One effect of a concussion is exercise intolerance, which is defined as the inability to exercise to a level predicted for age and fitness level. Concussed patients stop exercise because of symptom exacerbation, which appears to be an objective indicator or biomarker for ongoing physiological dysfunction after a concussion. The recommended exercise for post-concussion syndrome is sub-symptom threshold aerobic exercise. Sub-symptom aerobic exercise improved the central physiology of the concussed brain and reduced symptoms. Exercise as, as an approach to rehabilitation, the outcome of an active rehabilitation program on 16 children and adolescents with persistent post-concussion syndrome consists of a combination of submaximal aerobic training, light sports specific coordination exercises, and visualization and imagery techniques. So what is this saying? What is sub symptom threshold aerobic exercise. It is very light exercise, very easy. Could just be as simple as walking. Actually walking is a good starting point, but this is an activity that will increase the blood flow to the brain and help to heal the brain. Again, sub threshold aerobic activity, meaning that 
you do not have very intense training sessions. Very, very light, very easy. Like I said, walking is great. Just walk, get the blood flowing. If symptoms start to occur, then go ahead and stop. Some symptom aerobic training is potentially beneficial for adolescents and adults with persistent symptoms after a concussion, meaning that it is beneficial for post-concussion syndrome. Just keep the exercises very, very light and make sure that if any symptoms start to occur, that you stop immediately. Nutritional and supplementation recommendations for post-concussion syndrome. Increase the amount of omega-3 fatty acids, low glycemic index foods, and proteins from quality sources. Again, increase omega-3 fatty acids, low glycemic index foods, and proteins from quality sources. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. If you have suffered a concussion or are suffering from post concussion syndrome, or you think you have a concussion or post-concussion syndrome, please see a medical professional immediately. Viewing this video does not count as seeing a medical professional. Please get an evaluation and get the testing that is needed to help to determine what is your diagnosis. You can see a doctor of chiropractic like myself, or you can see another type of medical professional. But please do not think that viewing this video takes the place of seeing a medical professional. So please see a medical professional immediately if you think you have a concussion or if you think you have post-concussion syndrome. The recommendations that I provided in this video are general recommendations. Each individual case is different. So please see a medical professional, get the proper diagnosis, Find the sources of your symptoms and do everything you can to help to eliminate those sources. Thanks everybody for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report where I covered post-concussion syndrome. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and also find my blog. My blog contains articles on sports medicine, health, fitness, and chiropractic care. Also, you can connect with me on other social media formats. Please feel free to like, this video. If you have questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Always remember to train hard, but train smart and get adequate rest between your training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury free, recover from your injuries, and accomplish your